Hey, what up guys? Welcome back to another MMA Breakdown podcast of UFC 192. You can click the very first link in the description box and it'll take you to my MMA Underground Facebook page where you can always see the fights and see news and see everything from today's UFC event. So if you guys are excited to see it, click the links in the description box. And if you've already seen the fights, stay tuned. I'm just going to break down how I seen the fights and let you guys know who won and who lost and who do I think is next for Ryan Bader. I actually literally think Ryan Bader deserves a title shot. The reason that Ryan Bader did what he did because of Rashad Evans being out of the octagon for more than two years from being injured. But what we had in this fight was Rashad Evans getting taken down. And I've always wondered why a lot of fighters don't go for the leg kick. The leg kick is what will devastatingly take your opponent out of their comfort zone. And Rashad Evans kept pressuring Ryan Bader up against the cage, kept putting him up against the cage, up against the cage, and Ryan Bader looked very uncomfortable when he was up against the cage, but he looked very comfortable when he was out in the open, can throw leg kicks, uh, body kicks, and take him down, and overall, Rashad Evans got popped in the eye, and his eye was kind of like swelling up, and Rashad Evans didn't look all that overly impressive, but Ryan Bader looked overly impressive, looked really good in this fight. It's just a typical one of those Ryan Bader fights that's kind of meh, not really that exciting. He does the typical good boxing and wrestling. He, the reason I think he won this fight is not his overall boxing. It was the ability to take Rashad Evans down a few times during this fight. But like I said, Rashad Evans should have landed those leg kicks more. And once he got Ryan Bader up into the cage, he should have just landed more punches and bunches. But he got up into the cage and he would go, and he wouldn't really do much. So it sucks to see a guy, the guy I wanted to win, lose. It just sucks to see the guy that you're going for uh, lose because I was going for Rashad Evans all day, every day in this fight. Because I'm not a Ryan Bader fan. But I think what Ryan Bader done in this fight proves that he does deserve a title shot. At- so right now, we're going to see who's going to win this fight. Is it Daniel Cormier or is it the beast Alex Gustafson? Wow, going into the second round of the of the Gustafson fight, Alex Gustafson is taking down DC at will. And, D- and Alex Gustafson was able to take John Jones down when nobody else was. And... It's a one-to-one fight right now. So first round goes to DC. Second round goes to Alex Gustafson. But I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not surprised that Gustafson is able to take him down because he uh, really, really, really practices his takedowns, and he he does train sometimes with Phil Davis, which is a tremendously good wrestler. And Alex Gustafson is doing um, better than I thought he would because he's able to take. DC down. I don't know if DC focused on his extreme wrestling during this fight because he's like, well, I'll just be able to take anybody down. But if he's being taken down by Gustafson, that's crazy. And what Gustafson should be doing in this fight, remember what happened to Chad Mendez versus Conor McGregor. You throw that switch kick to the body, like kind of like a jab, and that gasses people out because you're just constantly doing the body kick. That's something that Gustafson should be doing because the fight's on right now. I'm, I'm just uh, giving you my commentary of what's going on. It's in the third round, four minutes into the uh, third round. And like I said, I'm not surprised. People are saying Gustin ain't the greatest fighter. He's one of the greatest 2 fighters. He- so it is what it is, guys. Daniel Cormier is having the most effect in this fight when it's at close range clinch fighting. And that's the way he had his fight against John Jones because John Jones had so much of a long reach. He was winning the fight based on being in the clinch. But when Gustafson or John Jones are on the outside, they're always winning because Daniel Cormier can't throw those uh, extreme uppercuts. End of the third round, Alice Gustafson lands an extremely powerful knee 
that drops Daniel Cormier at about. And I will say this, Gustafson lost by a split decision with DC. DC wins because of his overall pressure, landing in the clinch, and just going for broke. And that's one thing Gustafson didn't do was go for broke in the fifth round. He kind of threw a little bit of punches here and there, but Daniel Cormier was going crazy in the uh, clinch work and walking down Gustafson. So, so I got to say this, I'm not, a, I'm not an MMA fighter. I'm not a MMA coach or a trainer, but I've seen so many fights where you see one guy will go for broke, let's say in all the fights leading up to him getting a title shot, and then when he gets a title shot, he kind of lacklusters, steps back, and doesn't go for broke like he used to. And I think what happened to Alex Gustin tonight in this fight is the same thing that happened to Kenny Florian. And what is that, ladies and gentlemen? Kenny Florian could always get to the title fight, but could never, ever, ever, ever get over that hump of being a champion. Chell Son is the same way, and I think Gustafson is the same way, too. He can always be number two, but never actually be the champion. So, as always, guys, remember to rate, even if you hate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll definitely see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.